Hey everyone, today we're diving into a pretty interesting topic, the King James Bible and the books that didn't make the cut. So, the King James Version, or KJV, is one of the most famous English translations of the Bible. It was first published in 1611, and it's still widely used today. But here's the thing. Some people say that when they were putting this version together, they left out certain books and gospels on purpose. Why? Well, the argument goes that these texts were either too controversial or didn't match up with what the translators wanted to say. Now, before we go any further, let's get one thing straight. This isn't just about the King James Version. The debate over which books should be in the Bible has been going on for centuries. But the KJV is a good place to start because it's so well known. So, what are these other texts we're talking about? They're often called the Apocrypha, or Deuterocanonical books. These include books like Tobit, Judith, 1 and 2 Maccabees, Wisdom, Sirach, and Baruch. Some Christian traditions, like the Catholic Church, consider these books part of the Bible. But Protestant churches, including those that use the King James Version, generally don't. But it's not just about these books. There are also Gospels and other writings that never made it into any version of the Bible. These are sometimes called non-canonical texts. They include things like the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary, and the Gospel of Judas. So, why weren't these included in the King James Version? Well, that's where the controversy comes in. The official reason given by the translators was that these books weren't considered inspired by God. They said these texts were good for reading and learning, but not for establishing doctrine. In other words, they didn't think these books should be treated as the Word of God. But some people argue there was more to it than that. They say the real reason was that these books contained ideas that the translators didn't like or found threatening. For example, some of the apocryphal books have strong female characters, like Judith, who saves her people by killing an enemy general. Some critics argue that this didn't fit with the more patriarchal views of the time. Other excluded texts, like some of the non-canonical Gospels, present different views of Jesus and his teachings. The Gospel of Thomas, for instance, focuses more on Jesus' sayings than on the story of his life and death. Some people argue that this was left out because it didn't support the idea of Jesus as a divine savior. There's also the political angle to consider. Remember, the King James Version was commissioned by, well, King James I of England. He had his own ideas about how the church and state should work together. Some argue that books that might have challenged the divine right of kings or the authority of the church were conveniently left out. Now, it's important to note that this isn't a universally accepted view. Many scholars and religious leaders argue that the selection of books for the King James Version and other versions of the Bible was based on careful consideration of which texts were truly inspired and historically reliable. They point out that the process of deciding which books should be in the Bible, what's called the canon, had been going on for centuries before the King James Version. The translators, they say, were mostly following decisions that had already been made. So where does this leave us? Well, it's a complex issue, and there's no easy answer. What we can say is that the Bible, including the King James Version, didn't just fall from the sky as a complete book. It was put together by people, and like all human endeavors, that process was influenced by the beliefs, politics, and culture of the time. This doesn't necessarily mean that the King James translators were deliberately trying to mislead people. They were working with the knowledge and beliefs they had. But it does mean that it's worth thinking about why certain texts were included and others weren't. If you're interested in this topic, there's a lot more to explore. You can read some of these excluded texts for yourself, Many of them are available online or in bookstores. You can also look into the history of how the Bible was put together. It's a fascinating journey through history, language, and belief. The important thing is to approach this with an open mind. Whether you're religious or not, understanding how sacred texts came to be can teach us a lot about history, culture, and how ideas spread and change over time. So, next time you pick up a King James Bible, or any Bible for that matter, Remember that there's a whole history behind those pages. The story of what's not in the book can be just as interesting as what is. That's all for today.
Thanks for listening and keep asking questions.